Weigern. I'm CEO from Color Software and Vice Chair of the PF Association. And I'd like to introduce you into differences between the three variants of PDFA that we have, PDFA1, PDFA2, and PDFA4. And I want to look at them from really from, from a quality perspective. Um, I'm going to use our software to demonstrate it. Um, background to the presentation is we have, as you may guess, uh, PDFA software, PDFA pilot, and in support we receive, uh, of course, once in a while support cases, and sometimes come, come, um, customers wonder why a conversion result is different from what they expected, and in some cases it turns out that this mismatch of expectations would could easily have been avoided if uh, PDFA2 would be used instead of PDFA1. But in reality, I also know from support that PDFA1 is really uh, the majority of all PDFA files are converted to PDFA1. So I thought it might be a good uh, opportunity here to dig a little bit into technical details here. But before we start with that, let's just look back uh, at when PDFA1 came out, so that was back in 2005, uh, 16 years ago. That was a time when Michael Jackson was still around. George W. Bush started his second term as president of the United States. Technology-wise, Windows XP, uh, X464 uh, was released and Windows Vista was still about to come and only in the next year. So it's really an from an IT perspective, it's ancient, it's really old. But believe me, I, I love PDFA, I like it a lot, um, and I know and I, I, I believe it will live forever, PDFA1 should and will live forever for archive files. But I also believe that for archiving files that are created today, there is something better. And now I want to look into some of the details, what is possible when converting PDFA2 or PDFA4, which is even more recent, and what a software like ours that converts to PDFA creates problems. So first there are large page sizes. In PDF, the, the page dimensions are limited to 200 inch. That is as it is and uh, still is the case. Um, up until um, ISO 32000, where there is no such limitation. Um, but it was possible to create larger pages before by means of the user unit entry. That was introduced in PDF 1.6. And since PDF A1 is based on PDF 1.4, you can't use that user unit entry uh, in a PDF A1 file. So you are so limited to 200 inch which is, for instance, a problem for airplane wire harness uh, drawings, which are often drawn in one-to-one -one and, of course, then bigger than 200 inch. And we have customers that require us to refuse any such file to convert to PFA uh, and then rather convert something else instead of the PFA file because otherwise important information would go away or similar for large format printings. So this could be a drawing here and the converter just then has to decide whether it wants to remove the user entry, user unit entry or get back to the user with an error. So let's just have a short look at, a, at an example here. Um, I mean, you, you can't see a lot when you look at a file with a, on a screen, of course. Uh, it always looks the same because it's scaled down, but you can see here in our PDFA pilot software that this page actually is a 19 by 12 meter speak, um, and that is made possible by means of a scaling factor, a user unit entry of 10. And then, of course, if I uh, would convert this file to PDF A1, and then let's just do so. Um, and let me save our result here. Then, let's 
it's not much work so but it has to remove the user unit entry here and we've scaled down the page and then for this pdf file you don't see a difference here on screen but if this would be printed on a on a large display or if it would be a drawing you would have gotten lost of important information because you don't even know what user and unit entry entry was there beforehand next is layers layer so you may have objects on layers in the pdf file and that information may be important maybe additional information you couldn't have that on paper but in a digital world you have layers so you want to, 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 to keep that information and even worse layers can be invisible by default and i have examples for that too here um, so again let's uh, have a look at the pdf file here um, and then we want to uh, switch on or off the layer so i have a layer which has a name silver here and if i switch it on i can see some silver background and if i switch it off i can't see that so this information is important but can't be kept when i convert a file to pdfa so if we do so We do so, all that layer information is gone away. Everything has become visible again, even those parts of the page that were invisible, that I made invisible beforehand. And I don't, I have no means to, to find out what a layer, what objects belong to what layer. Even worse is the other case here, which is a customer file. So I have added the, the green box onto here to hide the name of the end user. It's a customer file. It, there is some art, and then there is a template, which is initially invisible, and that template only indicates how that artwork is to be applied to a bus. And this is also an example for large format uh, printing here, um, where you would use larger page sizes. So, and now if I would convert that file to PDFA1, so the software needs to decide what to do with the invisible layers. So, and in fact, both would be wrong. To just keep them would be wrong, or to remove initially invisible objects would also be wrong. So most softwares decide, and so does ours, to remove initially invisible objects. And so we are left with just the artwork and no bus. Um, so, so far layers, um, transparency, another case. So you can have in PDF files transparent objects and I have just um, uh, some examples here indicated with arrows where there is transparency, meaning the background objects shine through to, to the foreground objects. Transparency was uh, first defined in PDF 1.4 but is not allowed in PDF A1 because it was not fully specified there. I, I, I don't want to go into examples here. I just want to say transparency flattening is a complex uh, process because overlapping objects need to be merged with each other. So the, in order to keep the appearance, two objects that overlap with the other, each other have to be merge with, which, with each other and new objects are created. This is complex, error prone, and also time consuming. So I have just arbitrarily picked 200 files from my computer with transparency, converted them to PDF-A1, which took 41 minutes, and the same took place for PDF-A2, then without transparency flattening in just 12 minutes. This is uh, another recent case from support. Uh, 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 yeah, really a, a very uh, dramatic case. So I just asked the customer whether, whether I can use it for this presentation. The original had 62 megabyte uh, transparency flattening it, blowed it up to 1.8 gigabyte and processing took more than an hour. 
I'm sure you, you usually don't have such files when you put them into the archive, but what you can take away, if there are designed documents and designers love transparency, then uh, you will get rid of information. Text might be uh, converted to an image because if text, is, when, if text is overlapped by a transparent object, it needs to be converted and merged with, let's say, the transparent image. The last and the most uh, problematic thing are implementation limits. So PDFA4 requires that any real value, any, any integer, so it has limits for such low-level uh, values in a PDF file. Uh, and here is an extract from the PDF 1.4 specification where you see the limitations for a real value. Um, and in a way, software needs to somehow convert these limits which were designed for hardware that was around 16 years ago uh, and it doesn't really so these limitations doesn't apply anymore as of today but we converters have to convert stuff into um, into uh, so that they comply with these uh, uh, tiny limits and these are serious problems because they are so low level, so it's not always, it's, it's some often impossible to convert actually. And I have therefore another example here. So um, here's a file, it looks nice. We can um, zoom into it, it's from a manual, and then when I convert the file to PDFA, there's an error. So it can't be converted, and then when I click on report here, it tells me that there is a syntax problem, there's a real value out of range, too, ho too high a value and too low. So I could drill down further on here to find out what objects and what values that actually are, but I'm not interested. I just want to get a PDFA file. And the only thing that I could do and what converters usually do in such case is uh, convert the page into an image. And in PDFA pilot, you have a fallback conversion here. So we can just use this file again and convert it. Uh, into an image and I'm just using 100 pixel here. Of course, you could use better resolutions, but then if I use zoom in into the file, you see that this is now pixel uh, because it's an image. Not so nice. So let's just one time also prove that PDF A2, for instance, is better here. So we pick PDF A2, so we don't need the forward conversion here, um, which automatically kicks in. So I could also have left this on. It would just have been used. Um, and now conversion takes place. And as I've said, text is still text here. Um, that's implementation limits. There are more of this kind. There are embedded files. There are open type fonts. There are newer types of annotations and comments, newer encryption algorithms and certificates. So there are many things where uh, that are allowed in PDFA2 or even newer PDFA4, and where a conversion engine doesn't just have to uh, limit the result so. Uh, so uh, far, so much as it has to do for PDFA1. So um, I guess I'm uh, more or less at the end of my 15 minutes, um, and I always like to be in time uh, to be on uh, the winner uh, place. Thank you very much for being here with me. With me.